Hey y'all, it's Luthien, and along with Emerus, we are Girls with Sabres. This is our final volume in our Mentors in the Monomyth series, where we will be going into the archetype of the lover and how he must overcome and be the archetype of the matured lover in balance. Now, time for a shout out. Hello, Galaxy. This is your Supreme Leader, Kylo Ren, and I am back with a shout out from the girl's latest video. AT AT chat. And yes, I pronounced it the correct way. Here we go. Light and dark in balance. You have a gift with words, AT AT chat. Luthien tells me you have been under the weather for the last couple days. Suck it up, you moof milker. <laughs> I jest. I know what it's like to be violently ill, and the only thing that makes me feel better is this. Here we go. Soft kitty, born kitty, little ball of fur. Happy kitty, sleepy kitty, purr, purr, purr. Get well soon, AT. As always, peace, love, and Raylo. On Beauty and the Beast, if you look at the prologue, there is a stained glass that basically gives you the theme of Beauty and the Beast. And in Latin, it's basically a translation that says, He who conquers, conquers himself which basically means that you have to conquer your ego, your selfishness, anything that holds you back from treating other people with love and respect. And in order to conquer this, in order for the the beast to free himself from his bondage, he has to conquer those beastly or non-human ways. Like, Animal instincts are sometimes shown as the untamable or the um, absence of regulation. And that's, that's what he has to learn is to free himself of his selfishness and choose love. And, and you see that in the end of the story. You know the beast loves Belle when he puts Belle before himself and allowing her to go and, and uh, rescue her dying father. I watched this video that I thought was really, really good on this subject. It's from St. Michael Catholic uh, Community Church, but it's something that I think is applicable to, to everyone, whether you're a Christian or not. But he talked about what love is mm-hmm. and what love essentially is, is freedom. The greatest gift is to basically be able to receive love and love in return. And that's the beauty in the bee story. He ta- he made this wonderful point that the reason that Belle could love the beast is she was a free spirit. She didn't care what the world said about her. She didn't care about the small-minded uh, people in the town that she lived in. Uh, she made up her own mind, and although she is in this castle with the beast, it was her decision to take her father's place and it's her decision to love this this beast because of her freedom and the beast has to learn that too that if you truly love something you let it go which means that you give the other person freedom as well and i just thought that was such a a beautiful um theme in beating the beast and i also think that is a beautiful theme in Raylo, that they have to let go in order to come back to each other. You look at Belle, she's, she's exhibiting unconditional love straight out the gate. You always think of that, that unconditional love archetype usually being parental first. Like the, the parent is the one who is going to give up their life to save a, their child, this, that, and, and the other thing. And, and that, and that is true. And a parent would never want their child to reciprocate that because it feels unnatural. Like, no, I'm the, I'm the one who 
should be doing this. But Belle does that straight out the gate. She's like, no, yes. I will. I will stay in place of my father, which is symbolic of her giving her life for her father. Yes. And that that is just as powerful where where a child does that for a parent, because that means the parent has done their job, w- one of the jobs in, in teaching the child about unconditional love and, and the power and the beauty of that. In episode nine, following this this archetype, we have seen the parents give their lives, not Leia yet, not not really. Even though she, she, you could say she did. And you can make the argument for that, and I, I wouldn't disagree. But she's done it up to a point. Han gave his life for his son. Luke gave his life for his nephew. Now we will see that reciprocated between lovers, where Ben has to make the sacrifice and, and let Ray go to some degree. Just like the beast had to let Bell go. Ben Ben will do that for Ray. Like you said, he will he will give of himself. He will lay it all on the line for her to be safe. It's the way of the archetype. It's can it's if some if some people would just open their eyes, they would see plain as day what is going on here. Yeah. It's not well, even think- like like Sean said from Blue Panther, it's not even subtext. It's text. It is text. text. Yes. Yeah. And you see that in the uh, closing of the door on that force bond of crate. Yes. That is Ray letting Kylo be. Mm -hmm. You know, if you choose Kylo over Ben Solo, that's that's why she's mad. She's like, you are not the man. The novelization says that. He is not the man that she wanted him to be. Mm-hmm. Meaning, you know, if you're not going to be Ben Solo, phew, the door is shut. Yeah. <laughs> That's letting him go. I will have no love. compassion for you if you choose, if you choose to stay Kylo Ren. But then, yeah. of course, she said she will leave it up to the force. Yeah. She would never be the one to kill him. She couldn't. And she cared about him. Mm-hmm. Uh, Leia you know, said it. Why, yeah, and and the new resistance mm-hmm. book. She, you know, she's still that is an active state that she's in. Yeah, she still cares for him. And what Leia says to Ray is, "You can't save him. Mm-hmm. He has to save himself." Yeah, he has, and I think that's one of the ways that she's got to let go too. Is she cannot be the savior of this of him. Mm-hmm. She can, She's already sacrificed her life. She's already laid it down. But it is him to to take that transformative act upon himself. And and we're gonna go into the archetype of the lover. Before we go into that, we like to preface this idea that a lot of people have a misunderstanding of. Of the lover, they think he's some sort of uh, foo foo with a overly sensitive heart, and you know, no true man is like that. Well, the love well, that, is, but yeah. also like a Don Juan, almost yeah. a caricature, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, we found an article about the virtue of being the archetype of lover and the goal of manliness. Yes, according to this article discussing this archetype, the lover is the most repressed and stunted archetype in men today. Men in the West aren't encouraged to be in touch with their feelings, as men were supposed to be coolly detached from anything and anybody. But the great men in history understood that emotion properly harnessed is what drives greatness. The ancient Greeks called this passion for life a fire in the belly that propels a man to do great deeds. So accessing the lover archetype is vital to our success as men, but how do we do it? The easiest way to tap into the lover archetypes is to take more time to really enjoy the stuff that brings you pleasure in life. So enjoy the little things. Enjoy the little moments take time to stop and smell the roses, if you will. (laughs) 
Yeah. Uh, and and that's so true. Not not only do do m- that. Not only men should do this, but women should do this as well. Oh just, yeah. Just stop. It's it's so easy to get caught up in the the day to day and think about the negative and hold on to a grudge, hold on to an argument. That just just stop and breathe deeply in and out and make time to just center. Isn't that the Jedi meditation? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. that, that and that's something that they both both need. I, I think that's interesting because that's what Joseph Campbell says. When you slay the dragon, what you find is you find your bliss. Mm-hmm. You find whatever makes you happy. And to slay your dragon, you have to break up your your routine, your routine of life, wherever you feel safe and comfortable, but it's holding you back. Break your ego in order to find the treasure, to find your bliss. And that's what Ben did. Ben killed Snoke, but he still is entrapped in the shell of Kylo Ren. And only when he breaks through that shell will he find the, his bliss. He has, like, one more dragon to slay, and that is the dragon of the false identity. Uh, this article goes on to explain the addicted lover. And is an addiction, you know, addiction is always spoken of as, as darkness, which... It, which it is, but you can you can make the argument that Ben Solo became addicted to the dark in, oh, yeah. in some ways. It says the addicted lover is forever looking for the high that will last indefinitely. When he takes the first hit of something, whether a new drug, a new place, a new lover, or a new car, his brain lights up with pleasure. But our brains quickly get used to the same stimuli and each additional hit brings diminishing returns. So the addicted lover will then take a bigger hit of the stimulus in order to feel the same pleasure he got the first time he tried it. But he'll quickly get used to that dose too, and soon the addicted lover is stuck in a destructive cycle. Restlessness and dissatisfaction plague him. And, and that's what the, the video that I watched from... The, the Catholic Mass from St. Michael, he talked about that. It's the freedom to love. That whatever keeps you in bondage to be free to love is something that you need to break free of. Like addiction. Mm-hmm. That is like that is the love. That is like love that is toxic. Love that is holding you back and holding the person you love back. Like it is keeping you from actually receiving love because you're out of balance mm. and and jared from do back discussion talked about that mm, like the, mm-hmm. the the dark side is like a drug yep. it's an addiction yeah so you are in bondage you're not at the point of actually being in in love or having the freedom to love you're in love with the addiction not not the love of freedom and a love of the world around you. Mm-hmm. It's like a very self-focused, like that's a way of being entrapped. But I think I think uh, Ben Solo is the archetype of the lover. I think they're really showing that. Yes. And again, that is that is not supposed to be the fact that he's all um, not a manly man. That's about the fact that he is being the Greek. Uh, definition of of being a man. This is the young definition of the archetype of the lover. The lover is a loyal companion who fears being unwanted or unloved. They're passionate and committed, but they also desire to be more attractive to others and please everyone at the risk of losing their own identity. They might be portrayed as a partner, friend, or spouse. And you can see Kylo Ren, Kylo Ren being the addicted lover. Yes. Like he is addicted to that mask. He's addicted to that costume, addicted to that shell. Mm -hmm. Because he thinks that if he can be the mirror of his grandfather, he would finally get the prestige, the attention, the praise from those around him Mm -hmm. if he harnesses the power. Yeah. He's, He's addicted to that, uh, that superficiality. Like that's what, 
Luke saw a crate. Like he tried to Ben tried to get rid of Ben Solo, but Ben Solo is alive and kicking. <laughs> yes, has to be free. <laughs> it's it's funny when you start truly paralleling Beauty and the Beast and the sequel trilogy, uh, especially the the wonderful writing that that you and John Rossi did for Ghosts of Mustafar, a big word that jumped out at me and continued to jump out of me is cursed. Yeah. And even though we didn't see a, a witch or sorceress or whatever at the beginning of this film put this curse on Ben Solo, it doesn't negate the fact that he is cursed. And, and the sins of the grandfather had cursed him. Yes. To to a degree. And he donned the mask of and uh, the persona of Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren is the beast. And isn't that like that helmet is like cracked almost like an egg. Like mm -hmm. it, Ben it wants to be come out of that shell. He wants yeah. to be be born again. Um and I believe He's another fallen mentor. If you look at the color symbolism of The Last Jedi, you know, watch the color theory yeah. video, guys. <laughs> we have some great videos if you haven't watched them already. I don't need to go and watch Girl the Sabers. Yeah. <laughs> Shameless plug. Um, we, talk, we, we talked about how the dark blue, like grayish blue, is the color of a fallen Jedi. Mm -hmm. And you see that with Luke. But you also see that with Ben. Yep. And if Ben is Ray's mentor, he is a fallen mentor. And I want to connect what you said to um, the ghost of Mustafar, but also what you said to Blue Bantha, that um, the curse of the father is also similar to the curse of the mentor. Mm -hmm. I think Anakin bore the curse of the mentor and then... Of, of what happened when mentors are wrong and toxic and manipulative. And then, you know, Ben bears both sins, <laughs> the uh, curse of the mentor and the curse of his grandfather. You know, he doesn't have any good mentors. He never had. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's why he's so addicted to Kylo Ren or to the dark is because he feels like no one truly loves him. Mm -hmm. And so when you feel like you are not, not truly loved, you look for addiction to fill that place, mm -hmm. to fill, you know, that, that need for acceptance and love. And if he is the fallen mentor, if Ben is the lover as mentor archetype and is the fallen mentor, he is in that definition, a person who has lost step and faith in their own hero's journey sometimes literally their faith meaning that his faith in the light side of the force being a jedi they are um fallen priests as mentors in literature the new protagonist ray will allow the fallen mentor to re-enter their hero's journey and have a redemptive arc you know we, we talked about that that these are dual protagonists mm -hmm. ray is the catalyst for this, I mean, she is the person that is going to wake Ben Solo up, and Ben is going to to rise again. Ben is the the person that needs to restart his hero's journey. Watch our monomyth of the romantic hero. It's like Ben was stuck. Ben was stuck in like stage five mm -hmm. in the in the cycle. Like he could not get out of the trials. He needed a goddess to guide him through. Mm -hmm. Hey guys and gals, it's Luthien again. We had a herp derp moment and we forgot to say that the same Latin phrase on the stained glass in Beauty and the Beast is also on this of St. George. I don't know about you, but that smells like Bendemption to me. Thank you so much for listening. We love you. Peace, love, and Raylo.
Hello, this is Emrys, and with Luthien, thank you so much for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and click on that little bell icon that will give you notifications every time we post a new one. And of course, like, comment, and do all those things. <laughs> Peace, love, and Raylo, guys. All magic comes with a price.